Are you a small business owner struggling to nail down your brand voice? Have you hired copywriters only to discover they couldn't capture your messaging? If that sounds like you, then you need to download my free resource, Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps. Once you complete these simple steps, you will have a solid foundation for producing your business copy, whether you decide to write your own content or outsource it to a professional, like, say, me. As an added bonus, you'll be automatically subscribed to my email list, where you can learn more about my writing services and receive weekly updates about my podcast, Emotional Abuse is Real. Head over to the link in the show notes to grab Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps today. Trigger warning, this podcast episode features discussions of emotional and narcissistic abuse, gaslighting, manipulation, and adultery. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Emotional Abuse is Real. I'm your host, Serene Leeds. I'm a professional writer and storyteller, and I'm so glad you're here. We're back after a week hiatus, and on today's episode, I am thrilled to welcome Krista Dykes, host of the Secret Mom Hacks podcast. Krista and I worked together several years ago, she as a music publicist and me as an entertainment journalist, so I was so excited to reconnect with her recently as fellow mom podcasters. But as always, before we get into the episode, I have a few quick announcements. Please make sure you're following me on Instagram at Serene Leads Rights. That's S A R E N E L E E D S W R I T E S. And that you're subscribed to this podcast on either Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Also, don't forget to support Emotional Abuse is Real by leaving a five star rating and by writing a review over on Apple Podcasts. I also wanted to let you know that I'm gearing up for another podcast series like the one dedicated to toxic workplaces. This time, my focus is on emotional abuse from toxic groups, specifically multi-level marketing companies, also known as MLMs, as well as health and wellness groups. If you're interested in sharing your experience for this series, please either DM me on Instagram, email me at hello at sereneleadsrights.com, or fill out my quick and simple application form. I've left links to my Instagram, email, the show's application form, and my free download, Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps, in the show notes. On today's episode... Krista Dykes opens up about her toxic and abusive first marriage. Since there are many layers to her story, I'm trying something new with the podcast today. Krista's story will be told in two parts, with part two dropping one week from today, June 12th. So in part one, Krista discusses the signs of her husband's growing betrayal, during which time she was also pregnant and then raising a newborn baby and how she found herself in survival mode most of the time. So without further ado, here's part one of my conversation with Krista Dykes. Hi, Serene and friends. My name is Krista Dykes, and I am the host of the Secret Mom Hacks podcast. Welcome, Krista. I'm so glad you're here. Secret Mom Hacks is an awesome podcast. You're going to be given lots of opportunities to learn all about it while we're talking. So to dive in, uh, I just want to let all of our listeners know that you, Krista, have already shared some of your story on your own podcast, Secret Mom Hacks. I'm going to leave the link to that episode in the show notes for everyone to check out. It's episode 41, which was released in November 2023. But you did mention to me, Krista, that there are pieces of your story that you didn't share on your podcast, and I welcome you to share that here. 
Also, listeners, before we begin, I just want to let you know that Krista does have a happy ending to her story. She is now happily married to her second husband. And she also does have a Secret Mom Hacks episode about how she found love again. And I will definitely leave that in the show notes for you. So that was an overlong intro, but as I do with all of my guests, I'd like to turn the microphone over to you now, Krista. Please tell me your emotional abuse story. Absolutely. Thank you for this opportunity, Serene. My my story goes back quite some time. We're talking now in 2024. Mm -hmm. I've had lots of opportunity for therapy and healing and some self-care things that we are going to get to towards the end of our conversation today. But we're we're going to rewind the clock back to 2007. I'm in my first big girl grown-up job out of college doing publicity work for a company just outside of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And a couple of months into this position, they hire a guy in another department. I wasn't initially attracted to him. I thought thought he was nice. He was funny. Didn't really fit the look, if you will, maybe of the kind of guys I had normally been attracted to. But see, he seemed to have a great sense of humor, was gentlemanly enough. And we really connected over a mutual interest in in music. And so living in Nashville, of course, there's no shortage of live music opportunities to check out. So we ended up going to a concert together. And this basically became a date rather unexpectedly. He never asked me out on the date. And I basically, he and some other coworkers had started talking about this meetup. And Then separately, they started talking to me about this meetup at the concert and asking me, was it a date? And I said, well, I don't think it's a date. I don't know. What did he tell you? Does he want it to be a date? And they were like, well, I kind of think he wants it to be a date. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. You know what? It, It can be a date. Why not? And knowing what I know now about narcissists, Mm -hmm. I know how it worked out this way because narcissists will do nearly anything to avoid rejection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it became a date and he didn't even have to ask me out on Mm -hmm. it. But fast forward through a series of dates, we dated for about a year or so. We got engaged and we were engaged for about a year or so mm-hmm. before we had gotten married in the summer of 2010. So those first few years seemed great. We were newlyweds living in the outskirts of Nashville. And through various circumstances, we both ended up leaving that company where we had both met. Mm-hmm. I started doing some freelance publicity for some small companies nearby. And he had bounced around between a few different companies. And as I look back on everything that happened, the first signs of emotional abuse, which I know you have, I I have heard this on some other, this is kind of a recurring theme, I feel like amongst many of us, I've heard about it on some other of your episodes, but really came in the form of gaslighting pertaining to finances. Mm, Okay. Yeah. So Unfortunately, we had accumulated some credit card debt, not a ton. I mean, a couple thousand dollars, nothing astronomical. Mm -hmm. In addition to that credit card debt, we had my student loan repayment. And I knew we needed to pay off this debt before we could really start saving to buy a house. And I knew that couples who talked regularly about a budget and finances and so on were also more likely to stick with that budget and to meet their financial goals. So I would bring this up with him and just say, hey, let's, you know, once or twice a month or in particular, you know, maybe around our paydays, let's talk about where we are and just make sure we're on the same page with everything. And he would just kind of shrug that off and say things like, you know, it doesn't take a genius to, to do this. You just need to spend less than you make. (sighs) And as someone who's already, I have always been an artsy creative type of person. I started when I, was learning numbers in school. I mean, I've never been good at math. So then for me to be initiating that topic and then 
have somebody minimize it like that. I'm trying to, you know, help us prepare for a bright future. And he's just dismissing it and like, oh, it, it doesn't matter. And the thing is, growing up, I never really saw my parents talking about money much. I never really heard or saw them do that. My dad, he was always the head of the household. And my mom, you know, both of my parents worked. My mom really played more so the supportive spouse and okay, honey, yes, that sounds great. And my dad just really led all of that. And she just did what he said, you know, and that, that was kind of it. And so that's really how I thought kind of things needed to be again, young and dumb and newly married and not knowing. (laughs) And so I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to question my husband because he's got this under control. He's doing what's best for us. So we went in and out of debt for the next Mm -hmm. several years. I ended up taking a great position in the music industry, which Mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Serene, is how we initially connected, which is wild. But this particular position, it came with great benefits, a solid income, lots of great career opportunity for me. Like it was it was the greatest opportunity I'd ever had. And he ended up settling into a career that had to do ironically with financial services. (laughs) services. <laughs> and it was important for him. It was really important for him in this new position also to be networking a lot. And at this point, now this is around 2016 or so. And I'm thinking we finally hit our stride. We're both making this good income. My student loan had finally been paid off. Mm-hmm. We were both still using the credit card, unfortunately. So that seemed like a cycle of debt that we just could not get out of. Yeah. And so that also meant we weren't saving money. We weren't setting aside money for this starter home that I was so excited about um, or for when we started a family, which as we know, babies are expensive. Are they indeed? (laughs) (laughs) So it was in 2017 when his father passed. Mm -hmm. That's when I started noticing beyond the gaslighting with finances, I started noticing some peculiar behavior. So now Mm -hmm. at this point, we've been married for seven years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, unbeknownst to me, things were starting within a year into our marriage. Mm -hmm. But this is when I, seven years is when I started really noticing some things. Now, I never want to minimize the loss of a parent. I'm lucky that both of my parents are still around. Given all that I've been through now at this point, I have developed some healthy coping mechanisms and some positive outlets for processing my emotions and my feelings that I don't believe he ever sought out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I say peculiar behavior, what I mean by that is being away from home more frequently, not as interactive with me or as engaging or really showing much interest in what I'm up to, declining sex, overly dismissive of the money matters. You know, that was just a continual theme. Angling, this was the big one for me, angling his phone away from me when we were sitting on the couch. That's so that's, yeah. Right. That's, that's odd. (laughs) Whether we were on the couch or in the car or whatever, it would just be like, he would angle his phone just so perfectly. So I couldn't see the screen, but I just thought, you know, and I, I, so I would make up stuff in my head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, he's just, he's just sad about his father. Oh, he's, he's busy and he's tired, works crazy. He's working so hard and he's just tired or works slow and this is going to be a low month. He was in a commission-based position. So I'm just making up all of these excuses for him in my mind. It's so easy for us to do that. So easy. When I decided to put together a secret podcast with my sisters to uncover the answers behind some very unusual parent behavior, I never expected it to elicit hate mail but it did. It was the best feedback that we got by far. It was interesting. And, and what did he call himself? Former listener. Former listener. That's how. That's, that's how he signed that's off. How he signed off. But it's obviously triggered something for him. So. And and what did he accuse us of? It was um el- el- elder, elder abuse. abuse. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, saying. we're like we're hating on the elders. To be clear, I don't actually think we are hating on the elders. But to find out for yourself, check out Walking on Eggshells with an Emotional Vampire wherever you subscribe. Yes. Yeah. 
rather than me asking him about it, because I was scared again, yeah. newly wet. I don't, he's already fragile mm-hmm. and feeling upset and depressed. And the last thing I want to do is ask him, you know, and inflame yeah. those emotions. So sure. six or seven months or so after his father passed, so again, we'd been married almost seven years at this point. Neither of us are getting any younger. Now we've lost a grandparent and our parents aren't getting any younger. So I tell him, hey, I want to go off birth control. There's never a good time to do this. There's never a good time to change careers, buy the house, have the baby. So like we just have to rip rip the bandaid off and like, let's do this. He didn't seem overly eager. He also didn't shut down the idea. Mm -hmm. And so after, frankly, very few tries, in February of 2018, we find out I'm pregnant. Now, this is also part of the story. So that was February of 2018. We find out I'm pregnant. This is the part where we actually have to rewind the story a little bit back to a month prior. So... I'm at work one day and I notice the number of a personal acquaintance. She didn't, we didn't know each other all that well, but we had talked a couple of times and her name actually came up on the desk line of my work phone at work. Mm. So I call her back and ask if everything's okay. That's a little odd. I'm like, why are you like, you have my cell number. Call me. (laughs) Like we've texted before we've talked. So She double checks that I'm at work and asks if my husband is around. And I tell her, nope, we're both at work. I'm in my office. He's at his office. Why? What, you know, what's going on? So she proceeds to tell me that a few weeks ago, just before Christmas time, she had been out to dinner with a friend Mm -hmm. and she saw my husband out with another woman Mm -hmm. also at dinner and that Mm -hmm. this dinner did not look professional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking... It takes a lot of guts for a woman to call another woman and tell her yeah. that. Yeah. So so I figured she had to be pretty sure of what she was seeing. So I get home from work. I immediately confront him about this. I'm obviously upset. And he's pretty calm, like su- surprisingly calm, explaining that it was a work dinner. He gives me the name of the person he was with, the company that the woman works for, telling me my friend doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't know what she saw. He hands over his phone, tells me, sure, take a look through it. Look through emails, look through texts, go through everything. So I do. I take it and I sit there for probably 30 minutes Mm -hmm. looking through his inbox, his, his sent emails, his text messages, phone calls, and so on. Nothing looks out of line. And he promised me, he, he promises me that there's nothing to worry about. I would never do anything like this to you. And just, she, she didn't know what she was seeing. So while I chose to believe him, there is an inkling in the back of my mind. Again, a woman has to be pretty sure of what she's seeing to that's, that takes some guts to call a woman and say, Hey, FYI. Yeah. So there's this inkling in the back of my mind thinking something just isn't right. And I, but I can't put my finger on exactly what this is, especially, especially when you layer on this peculiar behavior, I, something in my gut is just telling me something's not right, but okay, just, just go on. You've looked through everything. You have no further evidence. So, so that brings us now back to February, 2018. We learn I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. Of course, we share the sonogram on Facebook and we're so excited sharing that baby girl is due in the summer. Well, a couple of days after posting that, I get up in the middle of the night. I've got to go to the bathroom. I take my phone with me (laughs) and I pop open Facebook and I notice that I have a new message on Mm. Messenger. Mm. Okay, what is this? And it's actually from an anonymous user which I did not know at the time. But yes, in case you didn't know, you can have a messenger account that is not linked to a Facebook profile. So this person was going by a some random nickname and she tells me that she's been following me for about a year or so, just following, I guess, noticing my public updates, okay. which I, so that of course was a public post. Yeah. 
And she saw that we were expecting a baby. So she had to reach out to me and let me know that she'd been sleeping with my husband for several years prior to this. Mm -hmm. And she's so sorry. She's telling me at this time and I'm sitting there thinking this has to be a joke. (laughs) You've got to be, you've got to be kidding me. Right. Right. You know, so I write this person, I mean, my heart just like fell yeah. to the floor, but I, I write this person a note and I say that this must be some kind of cruel trick. Like this is a pretty cruel trick to play on a pregnant woman. Yeah. And I say, you know, if this is true, then send me proof. Yeah. Yeah. So I go back to bed, eyes wide open. Mm-hmm. Of course, I don't sleep a blink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mm-hmm. I don't say a word to my husband because I wanted to present to him whatever this person did share with me if they did send me anything. So I go to work that next day. I'm on a site visit with my colleagues and I see another message from the stranger pop through on messenger. And I'm just thinking, oh crap. Oh crap. I thought they'd just go away. Yeah. So like like, like it was a spam, like it was a bot or or something. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I open the message She continues to apologize. I scroll down and then she sends me a couple of photos of his male parts. Yeah. And it's very obviously him. Mm -hmm. It's our bed sheets. He's wearing his wedding band. There's a couple of moles that are unmistakably his. And I'm completely livid. Like I thought I was going to have a panic attack. I'm so sorry that happened. Oh God. I don't blame you. Yeah. yeah. Like what do you do? Like you do because yeah, that's proof. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's like it's not necessarily proof that they were sleeping together, but it's proof enough that he was sharing parts of himself yeah, outside was, yeah. of our marriage. Right. And that he was doing something inappropriate. He was in many ways breaking your his wedding vows. Yes. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm just in shock and I thought I was going to be sick the entire drive back to the office from this site visit. And I pop out and I just tell my team, Hey, look, I've got to work the rest of the day from home. I'm dealing with a family matter that I really can't talk about right now, but I'm taking my stuff with me. I will be from home if you need me. Yeah. I'll be back on later. I've got to go handle something. So I immediately call him and I tell him to meet me at the house. Something's happened and I need to talk to you now. I don't Mm -hmm. care what you're in the middle of. I need you to go home Mm -hmm. and meet me there. So once he gets there, I pop open my phone. I show him what this person sent me. Mm -hmm. I'm bawling my eyes out. Sure. I'm clutching my pregnant belly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm asking him, are you cheating on me? Yeah. Now, now this time he's a little more shaken. He's mm-hmm. showing maybe some concern, certainly some defensiveness now at this point. But, but of course, he has another story. Uh, he's not cheating on me. He posted these photos on Reddit or subreddit, whatever the heck that place is called. <laughs> and apparently there is a, I guess it's a subreddit called, forgive me for this, but it's called Rate My Dick, where... People go on and from one to 10, they write the photo of your parts. Mm -hmm. And there's these write my things for, for all of the things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's, he tells me that ever since his dad passed away, he was struggling with confidence and depression. And he thought this was a way to scratch that itch that someone must not have liked what he had said. He was a part of, I guess, all of these other subreddits, or this is a world that I am actually very unfamiliar with all of these different groups and stuff. So, so, so am I, I mean, obviously I know what Reddit is, but, and you know, and no forgiveness necessary. If that is the title of the subreddit, that's the title of the subreddit. Yes. So he he said that somebody must not have liked what he posted in another subreddit group that they found these photos they tracked him found these photos and were now trolling him to ruin his life he'd never cheat on me we're about to have a baby right. this person's dangerous mm-hmm. i need to block them mm-hmm. don't talk to them again just don't engage 
And so now I am, I'm beyond upset. However, I, then it's just so twisted, serene. Yeah. Cause I you think, don't know who to believe. Right. Right. So we're about to have this baby, but I'm being confronted with these crazy detail, these sick details about the man that I'm about to have a baby with. Right. So I think I was maybe just in family preservation mode. I don't know, being pregnant and hormonal. I reluctantly, once again, Mm -hmm. chose to believe him. Yeah. So holding my belly, I tell him, this is your final chance to be honest with me. You're telling me you haven't been cheating on me. You're feeding me a story. You're feeding me some lines. Yeah. As your wife I and the person who committed to you till death do us part, I want to believe you. Mm-hmm. Things aren't adding up. So this is your final straw. Tell me the truth mm-hmm. because if something like this surfaces again, our marriage will be ending. Mm-hmm. I'm willing at this point if you come clean to me, if you've been cheating, let's go to counseling. Let's figure it out. Let's talk it through. I'm giving you that out right now. But if down the line... I find out that you're lying, that there's more to this story, then that, that will be the end. Good for you. So he, he, so I drew that line (laughs) very clearly drew that line. And look, I'm not a professional therapist, but that really sounds, it really sounds like you were in survival mode at this point, because how could you not be? You were first time mom, first time mom, exactly. Pregnant, first time mom, all the things, all the things. So he swore he was telling me the truth, mm-hmm. insisted I block this person. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. Our baby girl arrived that summer. Yeah. I'm off for three months on maternity leave. He appears to be a model father doing everything I asked, being so helpful. There's this wonderful new excitement in our home, this precious little girl. Mm-hmm. I go back to work. I'm focused on this huge work project while navigating the new normal mm-hmm. of work and mom life and all of the things. So, so please go check out secret mom hack. If you want to hear more (laughs) about that. (laughs) Yes. Yes, please. Yes. Thus the inspiration. (laughs) So around Christmas of 2018, I'm in the floor playing with our daughter and he runs out to the grocery store. I'm, I had still been noticing this peculiar behavior, but once again, there's just no finite details or direction where I can say, aside from what that person had sent me, which he tells me, he feeds me those lines. But something in my gut was telling me to take a look at his laptop. Mm -hmm. So I open it up. I look at the history Mm -hmm. and I notice there are several instances of porn websites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like more than several. Yeah. And so, so he's, he's doing what people do when they watch porn. Why do people watch porn? We are all grown up enough to know what that means. Meanwhile, he's declining sex with me Mm -hmm. when frankly, it's the last thing I want to do while I'm breastfeeding, pregnant, (laughs) you know, not not pregnant, but breastfeeding, raising this human. Yeah. Right. So... (laughs) So he gets home from work. I confront him about it. I tell him how unfair this is that I'm initiating these opportunities with him and being declined, yet he clearly has an appetite for it because he's fulfilling those needs via other means. And I told him, once we get through the holidays, we've we've got to start couples counseling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The new year comes, January flies by, then during the last week of the month, So now we're at January 2019. I get a call that shatters everything as I knew it. Thank you for listening to part one of Krista Dykes' story on emotional abuse is real. Part two of our conversation will drop on Wednesday, June 12th, so make sure you're subscribed to ensure you don't miss the rest of her story, including the silver lining to this harrowing experience. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, please don't hesitate to reach out via email at hello at sereneleadsrights.com, through Instagram at sereneleadsrights, or fill out my guest application form. 
please note that this podcast should not be used as a substitute for professional mental health services. If you are a victim of emotional abuse and need help, please call or text the Suicide and Crisis Hotline at 988 or call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also text START, S-T-A-R-T, to 887-88. Once again, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Follow me on Instagram and go grab my free download, Discover Your Brand Voice in Three Easy Steps. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you next time.